Hello there, this is Christian at Quarterlight Pictures for A Scripts and A Plugins and welcome to this introductory tutorial to QP Grade Assistant 2, my brand new plugin for After Effects. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the original version, uh, QP Grade Assistant is a utility plugin for After Effects CS5 and above. And when I say utility plugin, it, you know, I mean it's not really designed to be rendered but used during the compositing and grading or your finishing process provides five scopes and uh, different monitoring options to assist with uh, your color correcting works directly in the After Effects composition window which is different to some of the other scope plugins you can get um, and it puts your scopes directly alongside your picture and as hinted earlier on this is a native 64-bit plugin which has been rewritten entirely from scratch which means I was able to add a lot more features and uh, make the user interface a lot more flexible Okay, so let's take a look at uh, QP Grade Assistant 2. Um, we'll apply it to an adjustment layer, which is uh, my recommended way of using the plugin. The reason for that is uh, because it makes it easier to switch the effect on and off, and also you can uh, stack layers up underneath it if you're using it for compositing purposes. So let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and apply effect, quarter light pictures, QP Grade Assistant 2. So for those of you familiar with the uh, original version, you'll see the, the original layout here is, uh, is retained. We have our full color view in this big pane and our RGB channel views underneath and our lovely new scopes to the left here. I'll actually just turn on the original version just to show you what that looked like. Uh, so pretty similar in the right hand side but uh, you see the differences in the, the scopes on the left. So one of the things you might notice is if you apply the effect to an adjustment layer that uh, the effect will automatically turn on the uh, guide layer switch which uh, prevents it from rendering by accident. So if I was to uh, drag this intro comp into another you don't see the effect applied anymore. Also as standard by default the effect will set a expression on the position of the uh, of the layer uh, because in this version now you can actually move the scopes around either using these little crosshairs or actually anywhere in the uh, uh, the title bar and uh, if you don't have this effect selected in the effect control window then usually that would move the layer around so this uh, expression prevents that from happening. If you don't want that to be on you can just turn it on and off using this lock layer position switch at the bottom here and as you can see I just accidentally moved it so uh, it has a weird effect on the rendering of the scopes. QP Grade Assistant 2 has a number of monitoring options. There are five different layouts. The default layout is this four-way classic with your primary monitor view, your composite image here, and your red, green and blue channels underneath. An alternative to this is the four-way split, which is exactly the same views but in equal sized panes. This view is designed to be used without scopes and is useful for color correcting foreground elements into background plates. I'll be doing a demonstration of that a bit later on. If you don't want these channel views, you can choose to look at your image in a single full screen mode. Alternatively, you can use the windowed mode, which lets you position and size your monitor anywhere on screen. Finally, you can choose to turn off the monitor altogether and just have your scopes on screen. It's possible by pre-composing and using two comp viewers to have your scopes on one monitor and your image on a second. Normally you just stick with the RGB composite view in your primary monitor, but it's also possible to look at the alpha channel and the luminance channel. In the original version of the plugin, there was a gamma slam option that let you either slam up or slam down in order to check highlights and black levels. This has been replaced with a gamma and gain control sliders. As in the original version, you can choose whether these corrections are applied pre or post scopes. 
Also returning this version, you can reference an original layer and use it to compare before and after, for example if you've made a colour correction. In this case, I've desaturated my pencils image and referenced it here. I can use this slider to compare with the original. This diamond is a handle for doing the same thing in the composition viewer. By dragging down, you can change the opacity of the comparison layer, mixing it in and out. Finally, when in a four-way view such as this, or with the channel parade active, you can choose which channels to view. By default, the red, green and blue channels are selected, but it's also possible to view YCBCR, that's luminance, and the blue and red difference channels. It's also worth mentioning these other options. Mute Active Scopes turns off the scopes to make the plugin a bit quicker if you want to do a RAM preview, for example. You'll know it's on because this red line is drawn through each scope. You can change the sampling quality of the scopes using this drop down here. Low samples every 4 pixels, medium every 2 pixels and high samples every pixel. Finally you can choose which mass is used to calculate luminance. By default it's 601 but you can choose 709 for high definition images. Of course the main feature of the plugin are the scopes which let you look at your image objectively by giving you accurate readings that you wouldn't be able to get just by looking at the image alone. All the scopes in QP Grade Assistant 2 can be turned on or off using these checkboxes in the effect control panel. Uh, you can use them in any combination you like, you can have as many or as few as you like on screen at any one time. They can also be moved around either by using the point controls here in the effect control panel itself or actually just by dragging anywhere within the title bar of a scope like so. Likewise, you can resize scopes, again, using the controls in the effect control panel here, or by dragging in the corner of scopes, like so. The little swatch in the top right hand corner of certain scopes shows you which channels are being viewed at any time, uh, in this case the Luma channel, and in this case the red, green and blue channels. A waveform monitor describes the luminance or channel values of your image by showing the distribution of these values as you look at the image from left to right. So values on the left of the scope correspond to those on the uh, left of the image, etc. I demonstrate that quickly by turning on this gradient ramp, which is just a simple black to white ramp running left to right along the image. As you can see, at the left of the image where we have a value of black, the uh, waveform monitor reads zero, and on the right of the image where we have a white, the waveform monitor at its rightmost point reads 1. QP Grade Assistant has three waveform monitors. Uh, the regular waveform monitor, which uh, we have showing by default the luminance values. The channel parade, which shows three waveform monitors stacked side by side, each one a third of the width of the scope, showing three different channels, in this case by default red, green and blue. And finally the slice waveform, which shows a single row of pixels correspond to the green line drawn over the, uh, the image. That can be changed using the slice position value here and as you scrub you'll see the waveform change and also feedback within the scope as to which line is being currently read. If your After Effects project is set to 32-bit floating point you may see this little exclamation mark appearing in the top right of a waveform monitor this indicates when there are super bright values present. You can investigate this further by changing the max waveform scale in the options twirly. This value goes all the way up to 200%. And as you can see here, because I have an exposure effect added, just adding some more exposure to my pencils image, that we have a peak value of around 1.12. When QP Grade Assistant first came out, by far and away the biggest feature request that I got was to include a vector scope. So I'm really pleased to say that the vector scope has made it into version 2. For those of you who don't know what a vector scope is or how it works, basically it just maps out where the colour information in your image sits in this colour wheel. Take a look at the pencils image. This red pencil here 
is represented by this spike here pointing towards the red target. The closer the trace gets to one of the targets, the more saturated that colour is. The closer it is to the centre, the less saturated it is. I'll demonstrate that by turning on this rainbow grad image. These are all the colours of the spectrum, each one at 100%. As my vectorscope is set to 100% calibration, you'll notice that the trace line moves through each one of these targets. This tint effect, set to black and white, will desaturate the image as I increase this amount to tint. Notice how, as the image gets less saturated, the trace moves into the centre of the vector scope until it becomes a single point in the middle. The vector scope overlay, known as a graticule, has these box style targets. As an alternative, include the Hue Vectors, designed by grading guru Alexis van Herkman. This graticule is designed to be simple and easy to read and a lot less cluttered than the standard. Currently this is calibrated for 100%, which means that 100% saturation on a colour will appear directly over a target. If you want, you can zoom into the uh, vector scope by choosing a different calibration. Each one increases the zoom by 25%. Pretty standard to a vector scope is the skin tone line, indicated by this dotted line here. Also included is this reference line, Pick a colour from your image or choose one from the system colour dialog. The centre of this target shows where on the vectorscope your chosen colour sits. This can be really useful if you want to match colours between two images. Just pick your colour on one image, then use the vectorscope to match it on the next. Finally, there's the histogram, which should be familiar to anyone who's used the levels effect in After Effects. This simply shows the distribution of colour values across the image. You can choose to show RGB or luminance values. This scope can be resized vertically by dragging from anywhere along the bottom of the scope. You can use QP Grade Assistant 2 to find issues with mats generated from green and blue screen keys. In this demonstration I'm going to show how using the monitors, gain and gamma controls I can find holes and noise in my map. First of all, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to apply QP Grade Assistant 2. For this demo, I don't need any of the scopes on. And I'm going to switch my monitor to single full screen. I'm also going to change my primary monitor view from RGB to the alpha channel. If I turn the monitor gamma all the way down as far as it will go, You'll notice in certain areas there are holes. I'll just reset that. And then I gain up all the way as far as I can go. I've identified noise around my feet. This is not currently possible using the gain control in the comp viewer as it doesn't affect the alpha channel. So in this demo, I'd like to show you how to colour correct a foreground element into a background plate using the four-way view. This view shows the composite image plus the red, green and blue channels in separate panes. Looking at each channel, it's clear to see we have issues, particularly in the red and the blue channels. I'm going to apply a curves effect to my foreground element and then adjust each channel using these views to help. Let's tackle the red channel first. Doesn't look too bad, but the black levels look a bit low. So I'll just raise them a bit. Let's go to the green channel. Maybe just lower the gamma a little. There we go. And finally the blue channel. This is looking a bit lighter compared to the background. So I think we just need to bring it down a bit. If I select my foreground element into the original source drop down here, the diamond appears, which means I can drag across and look at the difference before and after.
In this demo, I'm going to use the scopes to help me grade this image. I know that this pencil should be red, and I think this spike is the red pencil. But to make sure, I'm going to turn on my reference line and pick a colour on that pencil. And as you can see, the reference line points to this spike. I'm going to add a hue and saturation effect and start playing with the different colours. So, let's move it back a bit. Now we can see the spike corresponding to the red pencil is aligned perfectly with this red axis. Yellows and oranges are looking a bit desaturated, so let's tackle that next. The red pencil peaks out around the 75% mark, so let's just leave our yellow pencils about there as well. Next we'll tackle greens. A bit too much blue in there I think, so I'm just going to take a little bit out. See the spike rotating around, let's add a bit more saturation to that. Good. And let's have a look at our blues. It's not very clear here which one is our blue pencil. Let's just move our hue around a little bit. This one looks quite good, but we've lost the separation between these two, so maybe let's try the opposite way. It's a bit better, I'll just increase the saturation a bit. If I go back to QP Grade Assistant now and select the effect, I can use the compare with the original slider to see the before and after. Because I'm working in 32 bit float, the waveform monitor and the channel parade are showing this red exclamation mark, which means that uh, some of the colours have gone into super bright values. Looking at the channel parade, it looks like it's the red and green channels. So I'm going to add a curves effect and reduce those. There. The exclamation mark is gone, so I know all my colors are within the range 0 to 1. Finally, looking at the waveform monitor, there's a peak brightness over in the right of the image, over here. I'm just going to add a little vignette with a black solid. And reduce the opacity a bit. Again, let's take a look at what our image looked like before and after. Because QP Grade Assistant is on this adjustment layer, it takes in the cumulative effect of all the layers underneath it, including this vignette. So that's it. I hope you found this introductory tutorial to QP Grade Assistant 2 uh, useful. I'm really looking forward to hearing all your feedback on the plugin. So uh, any feature requests, uh, please leave a comment on the product page at AE Scripts and AE Plugins. Until next time, bye bye.